Yesterday, <clears throat> when running my administrative tasks on the backup, the backup failed for a fairly unusual reason, and a lot of the other administrative tasks succeeded. Now, in my other database, which this was running in, it's a stored procedure that has, uh, I would say, about six or seven administrative tasks. And so one of the tasks, of course, failed um, at the very end, whereas the rest of them succeeded. So one of the things that I like to do in uh, programming is to create a checklist. That way, if my store procedure fails, since it does so many tasks, it will tell me which task it failed on, or it'll tell me what tasks it completed, and then I can deduce which ones it failed on. Now, there are multiple problems, or multiple solutions to this problem. For instance, one of the things that I've seen people do is they have, uh, they will call each job independently. So, for instance, if you have SQL Server Agent, all of these jobs that I have in the stored procedure would be their own jobs. So it'd be like backup database. Um, it would be CheckDB would be its own job, and um, rebuilding indexes would be its own job. But since this is SQL Server Express, I'm doing this as one stored procedure that gets called and does all the work and I like that a lot better. So the way that I approach this, um, I, the way that I approach SQL Server Express is to create a table that is a checklist table. Um, and since I have a little bit of time I'll go ahead and um, do this out. So So as you can see what I will do here is I will create the table checklist. Um, there are going to be three fields, a checklist ID, a task, and a task date. So the checklist ID, for instance, when I'm going through, and um, the checklist ID, I should say, refers to each of these tasks. So for instance, the first task in the stored procedure is to rebuild non-system indexes. So that would be task one, um, uh, database integrity and backup, which I don't have this numbered, two and three. So um, I'll just put tasks two and three. Um, database integrity would be one of the tasks, and then the backup would be task three. And the other thing too is if the database doesn't have any integrity, or if, again if it fails here, uh, if it found errors, then it wouldn't move on to task three. So I would automatically know that it stopped here. Um, so for instance, right after this insert um, to database consist consistency, you can see that the check DB is run there. So the way that this works is pretty simple. In the stored procedure, I will be inserting into the checklist and it will be, I will select whatever the ID of the task is. So for instance, if it was task one, I would insert task one. I will insert the task name. So for instance, um, rebuild indexes or rebuilt indexes since it's past tense. And then I will select the date, which is a simple get date. And so each of these tasks, which you saw yesterday that I was removing these because they were kind of in the way uh, for this stored procedure, but each of these um, inserts would go after, oops, on, after the task has been complete. So for instance, before task two, I would put that there. After the check DB was run, I would put this here, and then I would change this to uh, check and then of course if the database was backed up, and notice I'm putting this in if it was backed up, I'm not going to put this in the other one, I won't put that here because I'll know that that's missing database backed up. So why is this important? Because 
it's it's key to understand exactly what we did and what we didn't do. For instance, if the database wasn't backed up, we need to know that that wasn't that didn't happen. So when I go through my checklist table, um, and I, I clean this table out, I think it is weekly, so it never has uh, a ton of data in the table. Um, I can see exactly what was run after I run my jobs, and as I said earlier, uh, one of the big problems that I that I've seen, especially at other companies that I've worked for is that if a job fails they don't they don't record that so they don't know uh, another thing too like I was just explaining yesterday I've seen companies where they will run CheckDB but they'll back up the database even if CheckDB has an error they don't it, they just kinda bypass that so their backups could be um, corrupt they could have database corruption and so the checklist table kinda lets us know what was run and what was not run it kinda gives us a, a perspective and so like yesterday because the job, the run jobs command that I have in C sharp failed, um, and it was the run jobs is just executing the stored procedure. Because, like I said, this is SQL Server Express. I was able to go to the table really quickly, figure out what didn't work. I can load the stored procedure and then just execute execute that part of the code, which was just a, a database backup. And um, the the one disadvantage with having everything in a stored procedure is that sometimes it can just be a timeout. For instance, rebuilding the indexes may take a while. And so if it's taking a while to rebuild the indexes, yes, by the time it gets down here, um, it may time out. And I think that's what happened. But I ran the jobs again and everything was fine. So um, it's just every now and then that there's an error. Now, if it's a, it's a consistent error, then that may mean that your code is wrong or your setup is wrong. But if it's just a, uh, an error that you receive, let's say, you know, once every four months, it's unlikely that that's a code error. It could be... Um, uh, like for instance C sharp when it passes parameters that you enter into a stored procedure that in and of itself can take a while um, I can't think of the the exact term but we've we've had a lot of performance problems at one of the companies that I work at um, with C sharp apps passing in parameters and one of the things that we have to do is take those parameters and make them local um, for instance that would be like and we don't see that here but if we had a parameter um, let's say and we called it date this is what I'm referring to and we call that date um, one of the things um, so this date would be coming from a C sharp app and it's passed into here and then we had some code in here that would refer to that date well the that can be a huge problem it can take forever and so the solution which sounds so bizarre is to declare um, what I do is declare a local date and call it date and then set date equal to local date oh I'm sorry no it's backwards set local date equal to date and it sounds incredibly crazy like that's the solution but what it does is it passes it um, this parameter and it immediately localizes that parameter and um, it's called parameter sniffing that's what it is um, but anyway that can be where you sometimes have some performance problems with stored procedures but nonetheless having a checklist table will let you know exactly where things failed and especially in testing that can be very useful you could even code this out um, or not this part but just code these insert tasks out and just have them in the stored procedure for testing so that way you make sure the stored procedure runs with no problems but this is a great way for kind of accountability just to make sure that everything that the procedure was supposed to do it performs and um, and that way you don't have to worry about spending hours trying to figure out where it broke and where it didn't break instead you immediately know okay it failed on this task and you can immediately go to that task and um, troubleshoot from there.